How you guys doing today? My name is Mike Hudson. Um, this is Accessible Hunter Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Greg Trainer, as always. Um, and we've got Jeremy Kerr on that we've been friends for a good long time. I think this is going to be a b- good podcast. But Greg, how are you doing today, buddy? Man, I'm doing really well, Mike. Uh, it's almost the end of the week and I've had a good week, so I can't complain. Looking forward to the weekend. Weather's been crazy, but today's actually going to be uh, about 15 degrees warmer than it has been. But, um, man, I'm just excited. No rain today, but it'll kick back in again tomorrow. There you go. We're, we're expecting a really big cold front getting down into the teens next week. So might have to lock down tight next week. Nah. But, uh, Jeremy, man, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great, brother. Uh, doing great. Beautiful day out today. Like you said, the, at least the sun's shining today. It's going to be a nasty, rainy, coldy day tomorrow, but i um, going to make the best of it today. Hey, welcome to South Carolina, right? Yeah, absolutely. How you how you guys been doing, man? I know you guys had a pretty good Christmas and a new year. We did. We did. I mean, besides uh, my wife's uh, family had a couple of deaths the last couple of days. But besides that, I mean, we had a great, great time with family and friends, you know, and a little bit of travel down to Myrtle Beach the day after Christmas for about four days and uh, hanging with family down there. But uh, it was good, busy, but fun. Well, you tell us we're praying for us still, man. I hate that. That's always that always puts a damper on things for sure. Yeah, I will, man. I appreciate that. Not a problem. You know, man, I've known you for a good long time and we kind of we travel in a lot of the same realms. But, um, you know, we've got a lot of people on here that follow us from different avenues. And me and Greg decided a long time ago that we wanted to change it up a little bit and not so much focus on the hunting and fishing aspects, but meet people where they are and um man tell the people a little bit about yourself you know your your injury if you uh if you want to or how you got injured and you know that kind of stuff just introduce yourself if you will all right yeah man well like i said my name is jeremy kerr i'm 42 years old now um young man still but uh i've been injured uh from i'm a t4 t5 paraplegic i've been injured for going on march will be 23 years coming up um i had a car accident in 2001 which i was young and dumb uh it's not fun to admit but uh i was partying one night with a bunch of friends and uh got into an argument with the girl i was dating and she started walking home and uh asked others if they could take her home they didn't so i just got in my car took her home and uh Long story short, we got in an argument. I left mad, a little intoxicated, and had to be at work the next morning at 7 at Valvoline Oil. That's where I was working while I was going to school. And uh, I was speeding through uh, the small town of Central there and uh, uh, happened to look down. and Or oh, I looked forward, I see headlights. And then I look down, I see I'm doing like 60 in the 25. And as soon as I tap my brakes, I see blue lights and uh, – I panicked, man. I, I don't know. I've never gotten in trouble before. And uh, I guess deep down, I might have watched a little too much uh, Dukes of Hazard in my younger <laughs> days. So uh, I tried to outrun the police officer at the time. And um, I got to do, I was doing about 120 past Southern Wesleyan. And it, uh, the road forks off. And I don't really remember anything after this. But I, I will say that I don't know. It was crazy um, when I was running for the police. Not a lot of people know this. Like, I, you know, and you're when you're intoxicated, anyways, your emotions are crazy, anyways. But I was sitting there, basically yelling at God while I'm running from the police, like, "Is this what you want? All this?" And uh, yeah, I was going through a lot. My grandfather at the time had lung cancer; he was about to die. Just a lot of emotional stuff and stressed it. But I was blaming him, blaming God for a lot of the stuff that's happened in my life. And but right, well, it's funny, man. Right before I it took the fork. I, I said, God, forgive me for all my sins. And then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm in the hospital. But uh, according to the police, they said I slowed down to about 90 on that fork. And I guess I ran around the curve too uh, too fast and I got airborne and ended up hitting a oak, uh, like a stump on the side of the road, which caused my car to flip and do about 40 feet in the air and it hit an oak tree. And I ended up breaking my neck 
in two places and then my back in three, which left me paralyzed at T4, T5. So just thankful God gave me a second chance, brother. You know, that's one of the running jokes, man. You know, some people you gotta have you gotta have thick skin, man, with paralysis, dude. You know. Um, and I've known again, Greg, I've known Jeremy for a long time and we cut up, but uh tell tell the folks what ended up uh what career that kind of led you to after that. Yeah, it's funny. I, I I tell people, you know, I said God must have a have a little bit of a sense of humor in all this sometimes. You know, he's in control of everything. He has a plan for our lives. And um, I was going to Southern Wesley, and I thought I wanted to teach history, high school history. And um, I uh, started doing my school practicums and student teaching. And, like, that first week, man, I realized I was like, I would, I would cut out for, for teaching anymore, man. Uh, it's just different times. But uh, – so it went long. I got a call asking, saying something about, hey, there's a dispatcher position open at the sheriff's office. And uh, so I was like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll put in for it. And uh, went in for my interview and they, they asked me how I got injured and all that. I just told them I had a car accident at the yeah. time. Man, I wasn't going to spill everything right out in the open right then and there. But uh, sure enough, uh, about a few days later, they called and like, hey, we'd love for it. For you to come and dispatch at Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office, and so I, I did that for about eight years, and I worked my way up to supervisor after about three years, and I was supervisor over Charlie shift, night shift for uh, mm -hmm. for about five well five years, uh, but I had to medically medically retire in about 2014. So, yeah, Man, that, that's a good transition from uh, gray to blue. You know, a little bit of the outlaw <laughs> to to wearing the blue. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I, that's a pretty good story, and I'm I'm glad it, it worked out for you like that, Jeremy. It it uh, it gives people hope that you know just because you have one bad night, that doesn't define you. That's not who you are for the rest of your life. That you know you you made one maybe bad decision, but going forward, you uh, you did the right thing. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, like I said, there's there's only one perfect person, and that was Jesus. You know, and. Uh, we all fall short of his glory each and every day. I sure do. And, but I mean, the biggest thing is if you do mess up, you know, uh, there's, it's not too late to change and, and to get on the right path that God wants you to be on, you know? Well, well yeah, buddy, we, um, we're Clemson fans, man. Uh, I'm just glad you didn't end up in that kind of orange. Yeah, you know? I, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm blessed, man. Thankfully that they, they didn't charge me with anything. I guess they, uh, you know, paralysis was a, a, a big enough sentence, you know, to deal with. So. Right. So, man, I know you've done a lot of great things after that, you know, not only work for the sheriff's department, and, um, you know, you guys have done a lot in the past, do a lot with the nonprofit stuff. But, um, dude, tell us a little bit about the new adventure you got going on now with, with Anna. Oh, man, it started out, well, this thing, me and uh, Jenna, we're, Gosh, we're going on 14 years in October. We've been married for 13, but going on 14 now. And uh, we, you know, how it is with paralysis and a lot of issues. We we tried to have a child on our own for, for years, uh, or at least three or four years after uh, we got married and um, went to fertility doctors, did a couple IUIs, which – there at the time were over a thousand dollars each time you did it, you know, and um that was a process in itself, you know. But uh uh we tried that, didn't work out, and we're our next step we were gonna do IVF and man at that time it was probably ten thousand or more, I can't even remember now, but uh it, it was a steep and uh so I just told Jenna, let's take a step back and we, we sort of talked about the maybe adopting or going that route, you know, in the past and uh but we never really got serious. I said, let's just pray about it, take a step back and see what God wants us to do. And man, it wasn't long. My wife, she's a nurse at a pediatric doctor's office. And uh, one of the nurses, or she's a medical assistant that works with her, said, hey, um, something happened with my sister. Uh, she got into trouble, had a uh, rag. She was uh, using drugs at the time. And um had a wreck with Anna, uh, her niece, who at the time was like 16 months old. 
and she was left like passed out on the side of the road, you know, with her. And so officers got involved, DSS got involved, and she asked if we would consider like doing a kinship for her and keep her. And so I said, well, and I was like, Jenna asked me, I said, let's pray about it. And so that we the weekend before, like she called and said, hey, I could bring her by and let you meet her. So one day she brought her by, like it was on the weekend. We spent like all day um, Saturday with her. I mean, I mean, as soon as I saw her, I mean, I just knew. I was like, I knew that's my daughter right away. I I knew it. You know, you know, when like they were a little concerned about a lot of the other stuff that was going on with it, and so don't worry about that. I said God brought her into our lives for a reason, and we're gonna do what He wants us to do. And I said we'll continue to pray about it, but. Um, so she went back and then that Monday we went to the DSS office and signed the papers. And we've had her, uh, ever since man, pretty much, uh, from the time she's 17 months old till she's just turned eight in December. And, uh, we, uh, we, we tried to adopt her and it's, I mean, it's sort of complicated. I don't want to get too much, but we, we do got full custody. We had to fork out some, uh, about five grand of our own money just for a lawyer, because if not, DSS would have probably gave her back into that situation, which it's a lot better now. And and in a way, I, I'm sort of glad it didn't. I mean, I, of course, I wanted to adopt her and give her my last name, uh, but in a way, I'm, I'm glad that she's able to still meet her biological mom every two weeks for about an hour, supervised with us, just so she can see. And that way, she's no, I'm not trying to keep her from her and hide anything from her just be honest mm -hmm. with her because i don't want her as she's a teenager to hold that against us you know how teenagers get sometimes or they they want to blame you for things or oh you took me away you know i just don't want Anna to feel like that ever we just want to be honest with her about the whole situation from the get-go you know right great uh, you got questions on that end or well I, I just think that number one it's it's so important to recognize you know what you're all about you're you're about keeping on a safe and providing a life for her and you still want to share her and to let her know her biological mom and i think no matter what you're doing the right thing for your daughter there and i i just i find that incredible that there's so many people like you out there reaching out helping people every chance they get just in an unselfish way jeremy well i appreciate that yeah i mean it was it was tough at first, you know, because but I, I will say, thankfully, that um, over the years of, of meeting with her biological mother, I mean, we've, we you can't really say we 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 sort of formed a relationship with her. You have to. I mean, you know, and it took trust on her. You know, we had to learn to trust her and sort of she had to trust us to, too. I mean, I, I know, like we said, people mess up, man. People make mistakes. And uh Fortunately for her, she's made a, quite a many. And but I think now, um, this meeting, I mean, she's on the right path now to where she needs trying to be, you know. And and so that makes a lot. I mean, I can tell she's trying and doing her best, and that she does love Anna, you know. And so, yeah. um, but at least you know, it's we're still got we're in control and we we can supervise and make sure she's safe. And like you say, but yeah, I mean, we got to as Christians. So that we got to forgive others and, you know, and trust others and, and love others no matter what the situation, you know, and try to be there for them as well and try to give them some support along the way. And so it's it's working out good. Um, man, Anna, Mike is growing up so fast, but I, I got some funny stories, man. When she was, you know, 17 months old, man, here I am, never really dealt with a baby in a wheelchair before. So, uh, it was, it was crazy uh, transition for me, for sure. Um, I, uh, the, I One of the funny stories, Jenna was working, and I had to take Anna to the daycare that morning, drop her off. And uh, so I had, and I was driving the Ford F-150 at the time with the suicide doors, and I, I kept her in the back seat. So just being in a wheelchair, you guys know, it's a little harder bounce-wise to lift things up above your head and and so I'm about to sit her in the car seat and all of a sudden, man, I look down and I'm smelling something and I'm like, Oh no, that little girl, she, whatever she ate that morning, uh, it, it just exploded out of her diaper. So I'm sitting here like, 
freaking out, like, what am I going to do? And so I just sit her in my front seat, the passenger seat, change her diaper right there, trying not to gag and throw up, you know, but it was it was funny. Now looking back, it was funny. Right then it was a little stressful. Uh, but, you know, that's what that, it is. That's one of those things, though, man, being uh, being with paralysis, you don't know if it's if it's her that's, that's had about <laughs> Or us, you know. And I yeah, know I was looking. Up. I was looking at. I was making checking myself too at the time. I was like, "Man, was that me?" Or her? No, I, I, know. I didn't know how that story was going to turn out, Jerry. Yeah, I, yeah. It, it, it's you know, fifty-fifty could have went either way. But hey, absolutely, man. You're right. You know, yeah. that's the things. You know, it's funny being a dad with paralysis, man. You know, most people don't get it, but you know, my daughter was eighteen months old when I got hurt. All she's ever known is me in a chair. So, you know, she's she's had to grow up with it. I've had to grow into it and try to figure out, you know, what's the best I can do for my kid, you know, so that she lives a normal, happy life. And then, you know, you throw stuff like foul accidents and all that in it. Like, uh oh, <laughs> uh oh, this might be a problem. Yeah, yeah. It's Jeremy, funny. I, it's Jeremy, not- did that ever did that ever come up in the in the adoption process or getting, getting custody or was, was, uh, you know, department of uh, children and youth services. Did they ever question your ability because of your paralysis? What, what no, your... actually, no, actually, I, I mean, they, they better be glad they didn't because I'd had an ADA lawyer after him or something, you know, but uh, no, I mean, thankfully they didn't. I mean, we had a, the caseworker at the time. I mean, you know, once you meet somebody and see, how they are face to face. I mean, that when we went and met her, I mean, they saw me getting out of my truck driving, you know, getting my chair out. I mean, they saw I was pretty independent, you know. And then me, I guess, you know, where I was medically retired at the from the sheriff's office at the time, anyways, and they knew my background. So that probably helped a lot too, you know. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I could imagine them being a little concerned, uh, if I you know, wasn't as independent as I am, you know, I could see them questioning it, hey, it's, are you going to be able to take care of her on your own with your wife not there? You know, I mean, I could understand that in a way, but, uh, but, I, but thankfully they didn't. Pretty yeah. smooth process for you. It sounds like. Yeah. I mean, Mike, dude, I can't even imagine dude. like with y'all. Are, are you, uh, Greg, are you a quadriplegic as well? Yeah. I'm, I'm a quadriplegic. I see four or five. So I don't okay. have any hand function and limited arm function. So it's, a little bit different different for me. I, I am a little bit or actually a lot more dependent than, than you guys. Right. Yeah. Well, even with like Mike, dude, I mean, I, your hand ex- I mean, it, I can't imagine sometimes like when you had your 18 month old trying to do help her and lift her and like, you know, uh, change her diaper. I mean, it had to be hard for you. Yeah, I'm sure there was a lot of stuff you couldn't do, but there's also stuff you had to sort of adapt and figure out, you know, <laughs> it was uh those teaching processes you know you're trying to teach her how to tie a shoe but i couldn't physically show her how to tie it so i'd have to walk her through it and then you'd get frustrated and i'm like i'm going to buy you shoes with velcro yeah it, exactly it is what it is but you know it it was one of those things kids are so resilient that you know she didn't see any difference in it and then she was able to help me some too you know, hey, Dad, your shoes untied. Look what I learned today at school. And right. So able, she was able to go through that. So, man, you know, you guys are doing fantastic. I know you and your family, and you guys are giving that baby a beautiful home, and she's she's bringing so much joy to you guys. I see it. Um, see the excitement on it. I was telling Greg before you came on. I said, man, one of the things that I do not, um do not have to do anymore and i do not see it as a a fun thing is jumping off in that school line man where you have to be there an hour yeah Yeah. no i'm done with that yeah man every day all like uh, most time jenna will take her to school on her way to work and so at least i have to do i mean some days she's running late or she has to go uh or in early or something and i'll take her which dropping off in the morning isn't bad you know you got your little safety patrol out there grabbing them out and they don't play around man those little safety patrol students they get them gone but man the afternoon it's a whole nother ball game man you got to get it there about 30 minutes earlier for you know sometimes 45 just so you're not stuck out in the road and sit 
So it's just sitting there. Thankfully, nowadays, man, with these phones, you can at least read or do something to keep you occupied for a little bit, you know? Gosh. Right. right. And, and, and in the summer times, when it's hot, man, you, you're burning up, and then you don't want to sit there and waste gas either. So you're constantly either turning it off, getting air going, turning it off, saving gas, throwing your windows down, you know? So Yeah. But, you know, it's funny, man. You know, we look at everything that goes on in life, and that's the kicker. You know, when we're doing these podcasts and stuff, it's just about people seeing people in chairs and understanding we're just we're just people too, man. We're stuck in the doggone lunch line. We're stuck over here in the car lane trying to pick our kids up. You know, we're having to check our uh, our britches to see if it's us that had the accident. <laughs> and, you, and you had to take it with a great thought. You know, our injuries... Yeah are traumatic injuries and they're tough they're life changing and but at the same token man there's nothing we can do to change our injuries but we can change our mindset and then you know get back to living and then all we want to do is the same thing as everybody else have a positive home raise a kid that's that's um self-sufficient and productive and do all that man and and that to be said you guys are new homeowners up there man how's that going man it's going good uh it was a little stressful, man. The building process stressful. I will say that. I didn't think it'd be that stressful. Um, you know, gosh, we've been in the house for about three years now. It don't seem like it, but gosh, when we did, we sold our house in Seneca and ended up getting a rental house for about two years during this process because it took that long. But uh, but which I will say, we, I mean. For about a year of it, we really didn't even we we were trying to decide what kind of plan we wanted and that type thing. Plus, we had to clear the land and all that stuff. So, which we did that. But man, once we got the house picked out in the way we wanted it, and they're like, "Oh, it's should be about six to eight months." You know, we'll have you moved in? All this it'll be, dude. I mean, and I know weather comes into effect with it, but a lot of times, man, I'd come out here every day oh my contract would be like oh we'll be out there doing this that i'd be out there do wait and just sitting there nothing happened you know i'd be calling them hey what's going on oh sorry something happened blah 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 but i mean it took about right at a year before we got or got in here um but i mean i'm thankful uh it's nice though building being able to build a house that's accessible I mean, we, we need accessibility. Uh, our old house in Seneca, we had to add the ramp. Um, I got my father-in-law. Thankfully, he built me a shower that I could transfer in and had a little bench and all that. You know, we had to widen the door there so I could get in the bathroom, stuff like that. At least now when we built the house, I got the garage where you can just roll straight in from the, you know, there's no lift or anything. I mean, you just roll right in um bathroom got a rolling shower big bench uh i did it that way because when i get older where i can't transfer as well and get on the bench i can still use a chair and you uh take a shower that way then um the way we did our toilet i got plenty of room to transfer on i've got a bar on the side of the wall to grab onto um and then uh what else did we do I got to roll under, uh, I can roll under my sink. I got to cut out there so I can roll up underneath my bathroom sink. So it's just made a huge difference, you know? So we're, I'm really enjoying it. Jenna's enjoying the bigger kitchen area. You know, uh, Anna's enjoying the, um, her playroom upstairs and gosh, man, she's got that thing full. But, uh, and, uh, you know, but just, uh, and also, man, the biggest thing too, I love about the house is the open concept, man, to, that's what I wanted. Nothing really in the way. Uh, in fact, we had to change the design. They they put in a post that was sort of going to separate the dining room with the living room and the foyer. And I was like, man, I, I don't want that there. I was like, and it's like, well, it's going to cost more with a beam across there. And you can sort of see the beam back there across behind my head. But uh, I was like, I don't care, man. I said, I don't want that in the way where I'm going to have to go around it all the time. And, you know, just sort of um, so. I uh, got them to do that. So now it's completely open in the uh, living room, dining room, it, you know, our kitchen. It's it's really nice to be able to get around, you know. So it, the accessibility of the house, I mean, that benefits everyone. But now you can you can stay and age in your home. You know, not a lot of people think about that. They thought about maybe the short term cost of 
the beam versus the pole, but you're able to stay in your home and not roll around that for the next 30 years. Exactly. You know, I, I wish more homes were designed that way so that people can stay in their homes, uh, whether you have aging parents or or what. You know, you need to think about that kind of stuff. I, I wish more homeowners uh, were designing homes like that so that we could stay in it for the duration of our lives. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's nice. And plus, you know, uh, it's nice being able to go out um, on the front porch easy. You know, it's just pretty much straight shot. There's no huge hump you have to worry about. Um, I mean, there's a little one, but it's nothing you, you can't. I mean, you can get on it, over it with your power chair easily. Uh, and then on our back deck, you can go straight out. So all that stuff you take you take for granted sometimes because you go over to people's houses, you know what it's like. And they're having to lift you up, get ramps, you know, and stuff like that. It's just a lot of headache, you know, going that route. So thankfully, with most of my family, they they've well adapted for me as well. So um they they've got ramps at their house my brother i mean my father-in-law just uh he built two ramps one for his back porch and one for his front porch they just put in they just built a house beside us not too long ago so we're all pretty close over here but it's it's nice and plus i told them not only that like you're talking about as you get older so that's just going to benefit y'all as well where you're not going to have to go up and down steps it'll be easier for y'all to carry in your groceries and stuff so they're like, yeah, that's absolutely true, you know. That's yeah. the big crux is, you know, when we when we start building and doing all that, we can start from the ground up, have all the input that we want, um, and then, you know, really try to get ahead of any of those issues that we may have. But, you know, I know, too, being able to get outdoors, because I know you guys are um, in the mountains where you're at, you know, and uh, – I know you got a grit chair and some other stuff, man, but um, what other kind of equipment do you have that uh, helps out? Do you still cut grass and get on your mower and do all that? I, you know? uh, I have. Um, I was doing that for a while, uh, cutting my grass and all that. Um, thankfully, with the old, uh, we got family that live right by us. Like my father-in-law and uh, the uh, Jenna's uncle is right down the street, too, and so they they usually take care of my lawn now, I, but I still sometimes like I'll get out there if they haven't touched in a while, and I just feel like cutting grass because I I do enjoy getting out there and the outdoors and uh, cutting grass and stuff. So, but I do have that as well. It's just a regular lawnmower that is sort of hydrostatic that I can transfer on. You know, it's nothing fancy, but I I do enjoy cutting grass. But when sometimes now I've got a little older, I, it's not and plus. I mean, this is a little different, but I have to take antibiotic that sort of makes me a little more sensitive to the sun. So, you know how that goes. You don't want to burn up either. So, you just got to be safe. Right. But um, my other equipment that I use, man, I, um, I like I said, I got the grit chair. I, I use it a good bit. Uh, or I, I don't use it as much as I should anymore. But, man, it's where we live, it's a little hilly, you know. Um, and I think it's a lot heavier than, um, you know, your everyday chair, my everyday manual chair. And so on hills, it, it can wear you out, you know, and uh, but like I, I do take it out on like the flat parts of the land. I can easily, you know, and it's nice to go hunting in it. Um, when I do go hunting, I'll take it. And then uh, my other equipment, I've got a hand cycle and me and Jenna and Anna and uh, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law and the kids, we all went to the Doodle Trail uh, on the first of the year Um and uh, New Year's Day, and we went and we rode about four miles, and uh, so I, that was fun. I, gosh, man, I was, I know I'm out of shape, though. Good lordy, but we made it. Oh, we made it, and uh, and even the kids, they were they were pretty tired too. They they're not used to going that uh, long at a time, you know. But it was fun. I so I used my hand cycle, and then uh, for mainly to get around out here, I got a little UTV. It's a little two fifty um benchy uh cowboy and man i love that thing it's it's fun me and anna can jump on that thing it's got a little bed in the back if i need to do a little outdoor work or haul stuff around i can throw it in there you know and it's and it's it's easy to transfer on that's what i was gonna tell you mike i know you got that um is it a mossimo or something that bigger uh um your bigger utv it's a little yeah. higher up than uh mine uh, you, you know, the suspension, and everything. Mine, man, I think you could just sort of uh, 
go straight across, you know, to the seat, be a little easier to transfer for you. But, um, right. and, and it's fun, man. I, it'll do about 45, you know, 40, 45 with me. And I, it's, so, I mean, usually I don't go that fast, you know, through the yard or nothing, but up the road, we'll, we'll scoot up about 45. So, um, you know, Jeremy, you brought up a really good point, though, about your adaptive equipment and your family. You know, all of you were able to go out and enjoy the New Year's Day, you know, hike or, uh, you know, getting on the trails together using that adaptive equipment where if you didn't have that, you know, you wouldn't be able to do it. You'd be stuck at home. So uh, that was a nice family outing using, you know, your hand cycle and everybody could participate the same. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 we've done that with like you saw about with my grip chair and stuff. Um we've went down to the river and it's pretty accessible trail. And um uh, thankfully with it, you know, with your with my wife and family and my brother in laws and like if I do get tired, they can sort of get behind me and help push, you know, and um get me to where we need to go. So but it is, I mean, that it makes a huge difference being able to be there with your family and um, just get outside and enjoy nature too and what God created, you know. So yes, sir. You're able to that, participate. That's the hard part, man, is aging in general is tough, man. But then when you throw a spinal cord injury in, um, that man, that just acerbates everything about it. But that and too, you know, a lot of times I, I get lazy and I'm like, Yeah, sure, you can come cut my grass. That'd be fantastic. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, Wet. that'd be awesome i appreciate yeah. it yeah out. and really i'm just man i don't want to get out there and cut it right i know man i like i said i you got to plan it right i mean everything's about planning with us anyways and you know us with uh being a little higher levels and stuff uh we can get this for flexi real fast if we're out in that heat too long and and sweating it up you know or not sweating enough i mean and so you'll you'll hit over a hundred degrees real fast if you don't know if you're not paying attention, you know. So um and then oh last uh thank I mean I'm really blessed too that um this uh Jenna's aunt uh unfortunately her husband passed away a couple of years ago and uh he uh had a um scooter, uh um a heavy duty scooter that uh I guess the VA gave him and uh and he used it for a while, but when he passed away, it was just sitting out in the garage and everything. And so she uh, contacted my mother-in-law and asked if I'd be interested in it. So I said, absolutely. And so I was thankful and blessed to get that as well. And she gave me the the um, power lift that goes on the back of your hitch and everything. So I used that a good bit, too. Um, in fact, we went to Dolly. We got a, well, we bought Susan Passes to Dollywood this past year and the first uh, few trips, man, I, I just went in my po or my manual chair, and I didn't realize how hilly Dollywood was, man. And uh, good lordy, I, that on that new side, man, I really got a good workout, and Jenna got a good workout. And I was like, man, the next time we go, I'm taking that scooter. And sure enough, uh, the last time we went, we went with Daryl and Cheryl and um, them, and uh, he took his off road that whatever it is that you know what i'm talking about that four-wheel drive scooter he got yeah. or uh, that, X8. yeah there you go xa he took that and i took that scooter and man it made a huge difference <laughs> it was a lot more enjoyable that day you know uh my shoulders weren't killing me and so it was nice so but i'm greg one i got that <laughs> Greg, one of the running jokes is anytime we're doing a Aurora event or whatever, you'll look around and all the pairs are holding on to the quads power chair. And I'm, I'm dragging them all over Biltmore or the Atlanta Braves or somewhere. But we've got uh, either Jeremy Chapman or Jeremy Kerr is holding on to my chair and I'm water skiing them all over the place, man. We, those those doggone pairs, man, you got to watch them. We, hey, man, we, I, we, I, we, I we call it the disability parade sometimes whenever <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're going around, you know, the power chair, you know, hold, hold, holds on to that. And, uh, we we kind of do the same thing, man, a couple buddies up here, Mike, and that's, that's good teamwork, man. Oh yeah, Absolutely. Well, I know Mike, I, I appreciated that time when me, you and Michael and Jenna all went to Biltmore that time and it was rainy and cold and we had yeah. to park, even that disability parking's little, little ways to go and, it was raining. It was cold, and 
So you're like, man, just grab on. And uh, so me and you, we took off and left then to uh, get some shelter. To, and they eventually caught up with us. But it, I appreciate that. Hey, brother, anytime, man. I got you, dude. We, yeah. you know, we got to make some more trips like that. And, uh, you know, man, I've been missing you, dude. We, we got to get together. But, um, you know, we try to keep these things around 30 or 45 minutes. And we don't want to take up too much of your time. But. What um what do you guys have coming up soon? What do you what are you guys into? Oh uh, well um uh, well here lately uh Anna man she's a little gymnast and uh so I she's really uh she's been doing it for about four years now and uh she's really taken off with it and that's I mean she loves it and uh she's always been a daredevil anyways I mean she's gave me heart attacks from the time she was three um uh, flipping and flopping around the house and all i can think about is me and you like broken back and necks you know and stuff like that and but i mean i just sort of learned to deal with it and yeah i know that thankfully the way god made kids they're sort of like rubber bands man they can pop back up and keep on going unlike us you know as you get older but um so she's really gotten uh great at gymnastics so um i'm just gonna be she goes uh once a week usually to gymnastics and uh she's got her little air track now that uh she got for christmas and so at least it's a little safer when she's at home flipping and doing her back hand springs and tucks and all this kind of stuff uh so at least it's soft if she does uh not land it you know um but we're i'm busy with that and then um uh what else is going on jenna started back school so uh She's uh, wanting to finish her RN, and so uh, she's uh, a little a little stressed. I mean, she's excited and, and a little stressing out at the same time, thinking, like, I, she's 36 now, and uh, she's like, what am I thinking going back to school? I was like, oh, you'll do fine, you know. So, uh, And she, she's doing good. She started back on the 8th, and she's only taking two classes this semester, and uh, uh, one's online, and then one she's got to go, and um do a lab which she's already she had to retake it because her yeah your electives or whatever they expire after so long you know and uh so but anyway she's taking biology 101 again and she had an a in it the last time i was like you won't have any problems with that so she don't thankfully she's only got like i think these two classes and to take and then she can go straight into the nursing program again so um it's not that big of a deal there but and then for me, um, I, man, just trying to keep up with Anna and Jenna and uh, just see what what the new year takes on. And uh, hopefully me and you uh, can get together more and uh, get some stuff going with Roar. And uh, not not just that, man, just hang out and uh, do some shooting and uh, um, archery, whatever, man, you know. So. Well, that's the kicker, man. It sounds like you're being the stability and all that, and, you know, holding everything together. And, you know, that, that takes a lot, dude. It, um, it shows more of your character and everything, man. And I've always respected that. And, you know, you're always welcome here, brother. Um, you're just a little bit down the road. We're going to make it happen regardless. And, um, man, it's, it's always a pleasure hanging out with you. And I know you're a busy guy and you probably got to get ready to go do some, some picking up and some, dropping off and you know Absolutely. <laughs> be calm um, right now i know you got a lot of stuff and a lot of irons in the fire but dude i really want to say thank you again for the guy that you are man and the friend you've been and uh i i appreciate you taking all this time to get together with us and uh man you guys are doing fantastic i love the fact that you guys are taking on this full responsibility of you know getting a, a beautiful baby and honor and being able to share life with her and show her that life goes on regardless of injury and regardless of what we're dealt with in life, man, you guys are, you guys are doing good stuff. Man, I appreciate it, man. It means a lot. And I'm just, uh, like I said, I'm thankful. Uh, God, I mean, it's all, it all came from God. Um, we're blessed um, because of him, you know, he knew what we needed at the time and, um we needed on and on needed us and uh that's it's the way it is and we've uh need, we've been together for eight years now with her and um it's gonna be that way for the rest of our lives you know and uh 
she knows who her daddy and mama are and uh we're just so grateful to have her you know and uh but i want to say I'm, I'm grateful for you man and uh the friendship that uh we've built over these years uh thankful that uh what Becky set us up. I think she's the one who uh, got us together when I was at the sheriff's office, really. You know, I, um, she's the one who uh, introduced me to you. And uh, uh, so I'm just thankful for that as well. You know, God God always puts us in the right places at the right time. And uh, I mean, it's amazing all the people that I've met just randomly. And then, you know, you look back and man, man that's only because of God, you know. So, uh, but again, man, I'm thankful for you and Michael and just uh, our friendship, man. Well, Jeremy, it was so nice talking with you today, man, learning about your life. And I wish you all the best in 2024, man. And you, you take care of yourself. And thanks so much for being on today with us. Hey, Greg, I appreciate the invite. And it was awesome to meet you uh, in person. Um, and I, I'll be looking for your a friend request again on Facebook. And, uh, um, but I, I'll, I hope to do this again with you guys sometime soon. And uh, last, where you are? Where are you out of, Greg? Uh, Pittsburgh, PA. So I'm, oh, okay. I'm a little bit yeah. north with with the bad weather. Mike keeps trying to get me down to South Carolina, and uh, I, I so much want to come down and meet all of you. I mean, he's got some really good friends in South Carolina, and whenever I can make the trip down there, I want to meet all of you. Yeah, man, that'd be awesome. I, I was up in Philly um, for God two years. Um, we can, that's a whole nother podcast we could talk about one day, but I, I was up there at the Shriners hospital for about two years and I was a lab rat there for a couple of years, but, uh, it was really cool. I enjoyed the, the Philadelphia, all the history there, you know, and stuff and, uh, it's a cool city, met some cool people up there. So, uh, I know it's a little, little ways from Pittsburgh, but, uh, it was cool though. Pennsylvania is a great state. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of rivalry between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, but there's good people throughout the Commonwealth for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I will say that um, I, I did notice that the people in Philly are a little uh, less patient than the people down in South Carolina. Cause I, uh, you know, how big a city is and uh, or Philadelphia is. And there was a guy on a power chair one day and he was trying to cross the road and he's crossing the road. people are sitting there blowing the horn at him and all this kind of stuff. And, Yelling out, I was like, man, if that was in South Carolina, people got out of their car, pushed him across the road, make sure he's okay. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a different world in Philadelphia for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but man, I enjoyed the talking with you and meeting you, and uh, let's do it again sometime. You got it. You guys, man, I hope you guys both have a great day. Kerr, let's get together soon, brother, and uh. Greg, man, you know, you're always welcome in South Carolina. We'll make sure we get you across the road safely. And <laughs> nobody gets the horn in the out too much. Get me across the road and get me a sweet tea, brother. There yeah, you. absolutely. Yeah. There you go. But All you guys, right, gentlemen. Hey, man, you guys be safe. Love you guys. We'll talk to you. I love you too, man. Y'all have a good day, man. See y'all. Bye. Bye.